Hi friends, it's Sarah from Ruffles and Rainbows, and I'm super excited to share these plaster gnomes with you. If you would like to make them with me, boop, stick around. As always, please like this video so I know you're here crafting with me. Now look, look at these sweetie babies. They're so little with so much detail and none of that is due to any skill of mine. <laughs> All of these were created with pre-made silicone, uh, I'm sorry, latex molds I got on Etsy. And this guy with the stone texture is probably my favorite. All right, to get started, we're gonna use some plaster, a disposable bowl, stir stick and spork, <laughs> uh, measuring cups, cardboard and cups to put our molds into. Speaking of the molds, I bought these on Etsy. I'll put all the information below. She included a sweet little card. And now I'm gonna show you the detail on these molds. So this little guy is about three inches tall. He is the most popular and I believe her best seller. The link will be down below, but he's got the cutest little feet. I love his feet. And he fits perfectly in a pint-sized mason jar. All right, so the bigger guy may be my favorite. I love the arms, I love the beard, and I love the texture all over this guy. So he may be my winner, especially if you sell. So he is too big for the larger mason jar, but y'all, he fits in my Christmas gnome cup. Fa la 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 la. All right, so it took me about 10 minutes to get all set up here uh, to get the molds done the first time. We're using a piece of cardboard that's wider than the mouth of the jar we're using so that the mold doesn't get pulled into the jar. All to do is just cut out a hole in the center that fits your mold securely and you're done fits it pretty tightly. All right, do that for any molds you have and then plop them into your cups. To mix things up, first go get a dust mask because no one wants plaster lung, which I'm actually not sure that's a thing, but you don't wanna breathe it in. I got a silicone mat there and added for the small guy, half a cup of mix and just under the water amount mentioned. Don't do that. Uh, use the full amount mentioned, exactly half of, you know, one to two parts of the mixture that it calls out for. Go ahead and fold it more than stir to reduce the bubbles. Also, you're gonna tamp them down before you fill them all the way. Do however, yep, do however put your hand over top of it so you don't have messes to clean up like Sarah did. All right, so what you'll see is when you fill it all the way up to the top, go ahead and use that craft stick to scrape off and clean up that top edge. For the tall guy, I use three quarters of mix, put my hand over the top, and you'll see these huge bubbles come up. Go ahead and clean that up before moving on. The small one or the big one? The small one. All right, so my daughter was very excited to demold the little guy first, and I was worried. I'm not even gonna joke around. I was so worried that pieces of these things would be falling off, but look how easy it is. Bloop! <laughs> he comes out so pretty and perfect. And do the tall guy, and now you have to let them cure. So per the package instructions, you're gonna let them cure. All right, so when mine were done curing, I taped off certain sections. I wanted to use one of my secret ingredients of decor bloggers. <laughs> I'll show you in just a second. So it took me about 30 seconds to spray a couple of them that I had taped off with this stuff in short bursts. So what is this secret ingredient? Oh, I love it. It's the Rust-Oleum Imagine in stone texture. They have a couple different colors, but gray is by far my favorite. So I mentioned this right here. I don't want you to think you need this. This is glass paint for glazed ceramics. I don't care. Uh, don't use this stuff. It takes four days to cure. The only reason I'm using it is because it is just my favorite shade of red. That's it. No, uh, no. <laughs> No reason other than that. And so everything I did that day got two coats. My daughter was in the pool. It was wicked hot in Seattle. Here they are drying in the 100 degree heat. Too hot for Seattle. <laughs> all right, so later that evening, I brought them all inside and painted all the beards white, including the stone guy. Now I know plaster is white, but adding a coat of white gesso or white acrylic paint is really going to make your colors pop, so don't skip it. Also, I toned down the ridiculously neon pink nose. Once they were dry and set, I used a UV spray sealant. I can link that down below as well. And look at them, so sweet. Let me know in the comments, what do you think would you make them? 
Hey, as always, I sincerely appreciate you being here. Please like and subscribe for more crafty fun.